He's an exceptional assassin. He will kill again, unless we stop him. The Day of the Jackal is a culturally relevant, sophisticated, poignant, cinematic, massive show that will take a lot of people by surprise, will scare a lot of people, will make people feel, and will also remind them of what TV can be. Fuck! Bianca Pullman is an MI6 agent who is a boss inside. She likes to have things her own way. She's very unorthodox. You see her throughout the show struggle with herself, her mind, her passion, where the truth lies, where it doesn't lie, how she grapples with her own truth. It's a nice journey she takes from the typical MI6 agent that we know. You're not what I was expecting. Yeah, get that all the time. Can I? When I got the script, the first thing that came to mind is good skin and locks. I wanted there to be this unrecognizable aesthetic look to non-black audiences, but very recognizable, quite wholesome and historic look to the black community. It sends out a really loud and fierce message about our representation of hair and black hair on screen. I personally appointed my wig designer from One Love who designed this wig, Morris Roots. He was incredible and made it one time and that was it, there were no notes. And immediately I was Bianca. It was like a dream come true. I've never literally seen character on TV with a sister lock's wig. It, it, it was like a baby for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Having to do it, they were really passionate. Lux for me is, is heaven. It, is, it carries a, a level of deep spirituality. Her doing this for us as a, as a community, I see it as a, as a community move, as a, as a powerful and a brave move. Working with the, the team has is, is been so special. Mm -hmm. A very important part of becoming Bianca is her wardrobe and myself and our costume designer Natalie Humphreys spoke at length the first time we, we had a conversation about what it would be like, the textures, what we're representing. For me, the main thing was London. She's a West London girl just like me, but also she's got to have some like cool tailoring in there and look crazy smart. A lot of her wardrobe is based around streetwear, comfort wear, that can also pass as smart. I wore these growing up, <laughs> and a lot of guys that I knew wore these growing up, so these are special to be included. When Natalie brought on tailors, I was like, oh, who's it going to be? And it just so happened to be the tailors that did us for No Time To Die. And it meant that I was really able to celebrate my body and my curves and my height properly and know that everything fit well. This is something that I really, really wanted to get in. Headscarves for nighttime. Black women on screen need to be able to show their full nighttime routine, morning routine, that is slightly different to everybody else's. And Natalie completely got it. This is a London woman to me. This whole spectrum of her is London, England, parts of Europe, traveled woman who doesn't care too much about fashion but is always going to look good. We're two down. Target escaping on foot. In pursuit. Having done stunts, having trained in weapons, I thought that I could come in and be quite familiar with the work. I have never trained like this in my life. It was very realistic. It was very thorough. With our incredible military consultant, Paul Biddis, we were able to really get to a point where I felt like I was walking into the role as the person. I didn't feel like I was ever putting on armor and taking up weapons that didn't feel like an extended part of myself. And that's because of his work and how thorough and detailed we were. Myself and Eddie on separate occasions had to walk around Covent Garden in London and find somebody. We don't know who this person is, but we got images of them on WhatsApp. 
and who would just guide us in how to utilize our environment, which is what would be your early training in somewhere like MI6, and find this stranger. You've got my number. I expect to hear from you tonight. Can I go on I? It's a free country. Bianca is just so cool, but not cool in that she's too cool for school, cool in that she's actually a real fleshed out human being. And we took our time to make sure that she was recognizable internally, that emotionally you felt like a part of your center has tapped into her center through watching her. My job, if I'm not where they tell me to be at the exact time that they tell me to be there, then someone dies. Do you understand? I was determined to be co-executive producer on the show because there's a lot to discuss with in diversity and representation that kind of stays within those two words. There's hair conversations, there's skin conversations, there's lighting conversations, there are, in my case, wig conversations, continuity in it feeling like we are upkeeping in a way that me as a black woman and the black community will recognize. There's also body image, you know, there is what is femininity, who is taking care of the female narrative, which is my first question. When I first came on the show, I wanted to be a part of those conversations and have the necessary people be privy to changes within the production that are gonna help elevate us, but we need the details and the nooks and crannies to really understand why things have changed. There's also a lot of protection of crew that I wanted to do across the show. We've got a young person. I have a responsibility to someone who's playing my child, who is a young black girl, that she is represented in a way that she recognizes and that her peers will recognize. Evening, Hi. Hey. Hey, How was school? Good. Being co-exec, it means a lot. If I wasn't, I don't think it would have made sense because the kinds of conversations I've had over time, I'm so glad I've been a part of them. And I'm so glad and grateful to be able to pass that on to the next black woman who will also be in my position. <laughs>